Hi, so this is the Raspberry Pi um, case version 2.0. I've uh, all I've done here is added another layer on there, and uh, I've basically taken an old um, uh, floppy drive um, cable, um, taking the connector off one end. Um, when you do this, remember that some of the cables are twisted, so. Uh, I made sure I untwisted those, then I separated all the cables one by one and I've plugged it in to the GPI O port down there. Let's see if I get a good angle so you can see. I mean, it does go off the edge of the board. What I basically did with those extra pins there, as you can see, is I just cut them off. Uh, not, the, not the pins, but I cut the, the cable off. So it covers the, uh, the 26 pins um, rather than the whole. Um, ribbon connector for a floppy drive. So uh, uh, as you can see um, I've, I've then proceeded to thread them through these holes here. So all these cables have been separated into pairs and uh, basically um, one cable is right uh, as in the right hand side as in the, uh, the, the side closest to me and the, uh, the other side is left Sorry, other way around. Um, so this is the left-hand side, so uh, and the other side is the right-hand side. Um, so anyway, um, blue is left basically, and uh, an unmarked is is uh, is right. Um, and uh, I threaded each pair through a hole. Um, what I've also done is actually marked the cables. So as you can see, some of the cables here are blue, um, but if I look at a pair, so for instance, if I take the first two cables here it looks like a big mess I know but uh, there is organization of the chaos as you can see one is clearly marked blue and the other one isn't so I know which cable um, I know that this cable here is basically on the left hand side facing towards me and uh, in this particular cable set uh, marked one is um, the first pin um, on the GPIO so I know this is the first pair to come off it and, and because I know that I can basically work my way um, through the cables and work out which one is coming from the GPIO might seem a little bit confusing but there is a method to my madness uh, and then all I did is I, I re-threaded it through these holes here to help keep it away from the circuit board and also to help tidy it up a little bit so they're easier you know it is a big messy spaghetti thing um, but it's easy enough to isolate a, cup, a pair of cables whenever I need to and I can just keep going through like that. Um, eventually what I want to do is get some different coloured pens and actually properly colour code um, each cable. So I don't know how many colours I can get for um, um, permanent markers but uh, I'll have a look online see if I can find some. Um, so again, you've got a slight blue mark there indicating that that's uh, the left-hand cable. And um, that would be a right-hand cable there because it's unmarked. So that's basically how I've done it. Um, I'll show you, a, uh, <laughs> I'll show you a, a compilation of how I did everything and what I went through to do all this. Um, I basically, I took a time lapse. Um, so uh, enough of me rambling on. You can uh, have a look at how I did everything um, via the time lapse.
so that's the time lapse video. I haven't actually tinned um, all the edges of this. I, I sort of soldered um, um, that there. Um, I haven't finished that one. Uh, basically what I need to do is go through and sort out which cables I'm actually going to do. Then I'm going to strip and tin them and put them in the board. What I was originally going to do is because this is a 30 pin. I was just going to go from 1 all the way up to 26. Um, and, and then just take the cables out there into the main board um, but uh, I, I think what I'm going to do instead is work in stages so I'm going to work out what sh which cables I actually need um, to get some kind of signal out of the first project would be something very simple like uh, lighting up LEDs and I'll investigate the GPIO and come back with a tutorial for uh, basically turning off a series of LEDs um, using this particular setup so, yeah, uh, so far this Lego construction method is proving to be quite useful. I mean, I've got a completely customised case here. It might be ugly as sin, um, but it has sorted all my cables out and I've got all the holes in the right place and uh, it's housing my Raspberry Pi quite nicely. Um, I've got the breadboard on top. It's all one unit. All I've got to do is put in the Ethernet cable and all that stuff there and, uh, and just proceed to play around with it so yeah um, I'm quite liking this Lego setup so like I say it may not be particularly aesthetically pleasing um, it may be messy as hell but for sort of producing projects on the fly um, like for instance I want to try and produce uh, I want to make an FM receiver and uh, see if I can actually transmit that back into the Raspberry Pi digitally and play it through the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, so that's one of the projects in my mind. Um, I also want to sort of do um, some simple USB setups where you know I, I sort of make an output with the GPIO and then loop back in through USB um, to get some kind of input. So uh, so there'll be basically two programs running: one outputting um, a sequence of GPIO and another program then waiting to receive that GPIO information back through the USB and decoding it. I think that would be very useful for, um, well, basically uh, just simulating getting in the input from something and then passing it via USB. So as a USB development board, it might be quite fun. Um, I haven't really given this a lot of thought yet. This is as far as I've really gotten. So, uh, you know, once I uh, the will takes me and, uh, and I start deciding to play with this again, I'll return to it and... Uh, and we'll see what I produce. So thanks for watching.